end of the year so a lot of creators are posting their best and worst manga of the year but I don't have the brain capacity to do separate videos for that so we're just gonna tier rank all of the manga that I read this year. This year I read a total of 161 volumes of manga. Um, I either read them or I have DNF'd them so it's basically the series is off. might not have finished the whole series but the series is off my TBR so it's effectively read whatever. Um, that's how I classify it but it's 161. I completed 11 series this year which is great and I read from 46 different 46? 48 different series so I feel like that's pretty good. Um, most of them were shoujo or jose. I feel like I have how many seinen do I have? Most of the manga that I read this year let's see most of the manga that I read this year was shoujo or jose manga. There are about four seinen series in there and I read no shonen. At least I don't think I did as long as all of my things are correct. I did read like uh, My Hero Academia. I'm not completely caught up yet um, but I read it chapter by chapter so I don't really count that as in my volumes read. Um, I should have come up with a breakdown of how much of this is digital or not but that's okay. Maybe next year I will work on having better stats at the end of the year because I do like seeing like stats and stuff like that with my reading. So um, we are just going to tier rank the manga that I have or that I read and I'll give you my thoughts and impressions on the series. I said I didn't complete all of these series. Some of these are um, only half read or I've read a few volumes of it. Some of that is due to them being you know currently releasing right now in English and um, also older series that I can't get a hold of the rest of the volumes for yet. Just stuff that I'm in the middle of reading and just haven't finished yet. So a whole lot of different situations going on with this. All right, so let's take a look at my tiers that I have come up with. Um, so the bottom tier is gonna be DNF. This is did not finish. These are manga that just I have decided I am not going to read the rest of either it was like the rest of the volume or the rest of the series. Um, not many for that. Um, and then the next one is arguing about demographics. So this means that um, it's pointless, it's useless, don't even bother with it. Like I did not like these manga. The um, next tier up is gonna be if shoujo beat announcements were a manga. So this is kind of stuff that was just kind of like not super impressive. You know how like shoujo beat like gives us some stuff but they could they could be better. Our second to top tier I guess is second male lead. So these are really good manga but they didn't quite hit it you know they didn't quite get the girl yet. And then the top tier of course is Seven Seas at Anime Expo. So these were the manga that gave me the best year. We all know Seven Seas had a great year at Anime Expo with uh, shoujo announcements so these manga in this category are going to be the ones that um, I liked the best this year. So we're just gonna go in alphabetical order. So the first one is A Sign of Affection. I love A Sign of Affection. Um, I have... <sighs> Did I? I don't know when. So I have a bad concept of time. So I don't know when I started reading this or when it started to come out. I probably should have prepared a little bit better for this. Um, but it's fine. Side of Affection is brilliant, amazing, gives me such like happy, cozy vibes. So of course, this is going in Seven Seas at Anime Expo, obviously. Next up, we have Changes of Heart. Okay, so I've only read one volume of this and I've heard that it's really good. It's like a friends to lovers type, like a childhood friends to lovers kind of situation. Um, I've only read one volume of it. It is a spicy manga, um, so keep that in mind. But I was not super impressed right off the bat um, to like get the next volume to pre-order. It is a digital manga, um, so maybe that's why I was in the back burner. And I know lots of people really love this one. In Japanese it's like Hono Switch. So I am gonna put this in second male lead because I know it has the potential. So it's going in second male lead. And then we have Chihaya Furu, my child. Um, so I know Chihaya Furu um, finished up 
this year in Japanese, but it's still being released in English. So I am trying to avoid all of the spoilers. It is not working very well, but I think right now I'm on like 30, somewhere around 35 volumes out in English. Um, so I love Chihiro. Every volume makes me cry. So of course this is going in Seven Seas at Anime Expo. It is to use a term I don't like, it is peak fiction. <laughs> All right, so the next one is Daily Report about my witch senpai. This is kind of like a slice of life with a little bit of magic in it. Um, I thought it was okay. I have the second, originally it was one volume, but there is a second volume out. It got extended because it was so popular. I wasn't super impressed by this. The beginning of it felt really disjointed and it kind of felt like little vignettes in their life and then it kind of came together a little bit more with a more cohesive storyline, um, but I wasn't super impressed with it. It's really, really cute, but I am not dying for more. So I am gonna put this in if Shoujo Beat announcements were a manga. So this category isn't bad. Like I know the name sounds bad, but it's just kind of like, I wasn't really super impressed by it. So it's not, it's not bad. I still appreciate it. And then next we have Daytime Shooting Star, which I read all of this year and it shocked me. I don't know what happened. Um, I think just finally seeing it so much in the bookstore like wore me down and I finally, Red Day Daytime Shooting Star, and it really surprised me. This is an age gap romance, and it is a student teacher kind of romance. Um, there's like a thing there, but um, it's actually really good. Um, I feel like it's maybe not super like supposed to be like a commentary on like how maybe dating your teacher isn't the best for you. Um, it's more about like how your first love isn't always the best choice. Um, but it's still really good and um, I really recommend, like if you absolutely cannot stand student teacher relationships, then do not read it. I'm not gonna force you to, but um, the one thing I will say, slight spoiler, but I feel like it's important. Um, she does not end up with a teacher and that's a really important thing. And that's the thing that got me to read this manga. So um, I think it's better that it's all out now, um, but Daytime Shooting Star is gonna go into second male lead because I really liked it and it really surprised me. Uh, next we have Define Kurosaki-kun, which I finished this year. <laughs> And it is so good. I want more people to talk about Define Kurosaki-kun. This is another one that maybe people wouldn't super love because of the male character. He's kind of like that mean boy type of character. And I know a lot of people don't like that, but if you're okay with that, Define Kurosaki-kun is so good. I love it so much. I feel like this, if this one is digital only, and I feel like if it was in print, then more people would love it and pick it up. Um, I picked this up because I watched the live action drama for it and loved it and then started reading the manga and fell in love. It kind of like ignites that like, oh, I can fix him sort of attitude that I like to have towards shoujo male leads. Um, so Define Kurosaki-kun is going in to Seven Seas at Anime Expo because I really, really enjoyed it. Um, next up is Devil's Line. So Devil's Line is one of the seinen manga that I read this year and it's like a seinen romance but like vampires and like cop drama and it's so good. I watched the anime for it and I needed more. So I only read two volumes of it. Um, I have up to four now. Like I'm very behind and I'm still on the content that is the anime. Um, and the anime is really good. Um, and the manga is also really good. Pretty close adaption too. Um, so I'm gonna put Devil's Line in second, second male lead because it is content that I've seen from the anime. Uh, so far that I have read it. Maybe next year it will go up a tier. Um, next up we have Dan Angel. And so Dan Angel I put uh, as one of my completed series because I read all of the like official English translation printed Tokyo Pop versions. It is now finished in Japan. It took several years, uh, but these are the original volumes that were published in English. I don't know if the rest of the series has been picked up in English. Dan Angel I loved as a kid and as an adult, didn't like it so much. I feel like it was really disjointed and kind of all over the place. So I am going to put Dean Angel in if Shoujo Beat announcements were a manga because it kind of disappointed a little bit. I didn't really, I didn't really feel it as much as I did as a kid. 
Uh, next up we have Fushigi Yugi, which I was trying to finish all of this year, but I just couldn't do it. Um, but Fushigi Yugi is probably, it might be have been my first day manga, I don't know, um, but one of the first. Uh, so rereading the whole thing um, and farther than I did when I was a kid has been an amazing experience. I love it so much. Uh, so Fushigi Yugi, of course, is going into Seven Seas as, as at Anime Expo because Fushigi Yugi is like the best isekai you could ever read. Uh, next up, I have another digital manga. It's Having an Idol Loving Boyfriend is the Best. And this is a manga that um, really speaks to me as like a, like a Johnny's fan or an idol fan because um, it kind of like describes my life. Of course, my boyfriend is not into like idols or anything like that, but I really like a manga about like idols and about like idol fan culture. So this one was super, super cute. Um, and it's like, it spoke to my idol fan like life. Of course, like I can't participate in any events or whatever at in Japan because I don't live there, but it just, it spoke to the lifestyle and I really appreciate that. It's so cute. The main couple is really, really cute. So I really liked it. Um, so having an idol loving boyfriend is the best goes into second male lead because it is adorable. There's only two volumes out right now. Um, next up is Heaven's Will, which is a one shot that I picked up at the secondhand store like a million years ago. And I started to try to read it and like, I did not care about anything. Like. I don't care about this manga, so I stopped reading in the middle of it. Um, it's supposed to be some sort of like supernatural type of mystery type thing. Um, there's a guy who is a vampire, but also a werewolf. I don't know. It was too confusing and I just didn't care about it. Um, so I stopped reading halfway through. So it's the first one that goes in our DNF category. Next up is Honey and Clover. I love Honey and Clover so much. It is absolutely beautiful. Like if you want a manga about like love and relationships in college, this is the manga for you. Um, it's also about a bunch of art students and talks a lot about kind of like, um, like living up to your, not living up to, but like uh, how to feel like when your friends are insanely talented and you are not <laughs> um, and kind of like dealing with that. Um, I really love Honey, Cl Honey and Clover. I. Um, have a really good like soft spot for the live action movie and the live action drama from many years ago and reading the manga for the first time has just been like a, such a joy. I cry so much. Um, I'm Several volumes are being held hostage by Right Stuff right now um, so I do not have it all but uh, hopefully I could get it all soon. Um, but Honey and Clover is going to go into Seven Seas at Anime Expo because it is gorgeous. Next up we have Honey Blood, which is a three-ish volume vampire romance. It's an age gap romance. Uh, the girls in high, in high school, the guy is like a vampire, but like stopped being a vampire in his 20s. Um, and he's like an adult. And it's like, it's cute if you like, like kind of like vampire age gap romances. Um, but it didn't really strike me with anything like excellent. Um, the one thing about the series is that there are two volumes of it and then there's a volume zero which is a little bit confusing because the volume zero includes the original like one shot for it that the two volumes is based off of. So you get to kind of see how a manga ka will um, interpret characters or change characters for a longer series but it just wasn't super super great. Um, so I'm putting this one in if Shoujo Beat announcements were a manga. Then we have Imakoi. So Imakoi was good until two, volume two, when there was the sister thing. And I feel like if you've read Imakoi, like, you know, um, but if, volume one was really cute and like fun slice of life. Um, but Imakoi volume two is not good. Um, it's just adds a lot of like useless stuff. Um, so I don't know where I'm gonna put Imakoi. Like Imakoi is maybe if Shoujo Beats announcements were a manga, but he also could be arguing about demographics. Like, I, I mean, I guess it's not pointless because the first volume is good and I've heard it gets better and I'm going to continue with it. Um, so I think we're gonna put if Shoujo Beat announcements were manga. And then we have Kageki Shoujo. <sighs> Kageki Shoujo is the best. I'm really, really behind on Kageki Shoujo. I've only read up to volume four, I think, but it's so good. It like, Kageki Shoujo is like 
every theater kid's dream. It's so, so good. <laughs> Um, it's about these girls who join this all-female theater troupe and it kind of deals with them entering into this theater world and trying to become the top stars and also a lot with um, their relationships and stuff like that. So it's really, it's really good. It also talks a lot about like Takarazuka fa uh, theater, which is like all-female theater from Japan. There's also a like storyline in there about kabuki like traditional japanese theater so like really if you love theater like this is going to be for you if you love stories about female friendships kageki shoujo is it if you just want cute stuff like it's so good there's like little to no romance in it so if you want a manga that is not focused on romance the main character does have a boyfriend but there's they're not even in the same place. It's it's so good and you can tell that the author has like a really big love of theater. It's it's so good. Um, more people need to talk about Kageki Shoujo so Kageki Shoujo is going into Seven Seas Anime Expo because it is beautiful. <laughs> then we have um I always mess this title up it's Koika Kubo Kun Stole My First Time. So this is a digital manga it's like a spicy manga and it's like you know, an older woman and a younger guy who is, who is her junior at work and they start a, like, a sexy time relationship, basically. Um, and it, nothing really stuck out to me. I wasn't dying for the next volume. I think I read three volumes of this somewhere around there. Um, it seems like all they do is, like, have sex. <laughs> um, so there isn't too much else going on there so I don't know it didn't really stick out to me I might or might not read more uh not 100% sure but this is gonna go in if shoujo beat announcements were a manga uh, then we have love of kill so this is a shoujo manga about two assassins this is really billed as like a romance but I don't feel the romance vibes like the main guy keeps on like trying to ask out like the main girl and she's like absolutely not um and they kind of have like a like kinship relationship or whatever um you can tell they're getting closer she doesn't say too much um i forget her name which is terrible they do seem to be getting closer but i don't feel that like romance vibe to it um but it's still pretty good. Um, there's lots of action, um, a lot of twists and turns. Uh, I was left on a cliffhanger in one volume and had to immediately go out and buy another one be the next volume because it was so good. Um, so Love of Kill goes into second male lead. This one has an anime. I have not watched an anime past where the manga is because I want to read the manga first before the, the anime. But uh, Love of Kill I think is really good. I feel like um, if you go into it not expecting like tons of romance, then um, it's really good. Then we have Lovesick Ellie, oh, my love. Okay, so this um, was originally a digital manga and then it was so popular that Kuran just decided to print it. We love that. And Lovesick Ellie is slice of life romance. The girl is obsessed with Twitter and um, it just speaks to like my Twitter chronically online self. Um, so I wonder how Ellie would feel about the whole thing happening with Twitter right now. I love Lovesick Ellie with my whole heart. It is so funny and so heartfelt and so cute. I love it. So Lovesick Ellie goes into Seven Seas as, at Anime Expo. All right, then we have Love and Heart. So I read three volumes of this. I got catfished out of this manga because the covers are much more spicy, like lead you to believe that it's a much more spicy manga than it is. There's no spice in this manga, uh, at least in the first three volumes. And this is kind of like a psychological thriller type of thing. And I don't really know how I feel about it. It's kind of middle of the road for me. I haven't like, rushed out to get the next volumes. So uh, Love and Heart goes in if Shoujo Beat announcements were a manga. Uh, then we have Mixed Vegetables. So this is an older manga. I have the whole thing, but I DNF'd it. So Mixed Vegetables go in DNF. I didn't like the main characters in the first two volumes. Couldn't get through it. There's so much flip-flopping of like, I'm lying, I'm not lying anymore blah 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 so I just couldn't get get through it so I just DNF'd it. I 
I have not decided if I'm getting rid of it because there's always a possibility that if somebody convinces me, I will stick through it, but currently it is DNF. I got through a volume and a half of it, and I feel like if I can't get through more than a volume and a half, then that's kind of bad. Um, the next one I have is Nighttime for Just Us Two, which is a three volume digital only manga. I think it's only three volumes. Um, I'm in the middle of the third volume right now, but I haven't picked it up. I don't know why I just stopped in the middle, but anyway, um, this is really cute. It's like a body switching alien sci-fi type of thing. It's super, super cute, but it's also like talking about like loneliness and stuff like that. And it's really, really cute. The art is really cute. The story is really good. It's really fun. Um, I feel like more people should read this. So Nighttime for Just Us 2 is gonna go to Seven Seas at Anime Expo because this one really surprised me and I love it a lot. And then we have Nina and the Starry Bride and I finally caved and I bought this one digitally. And um, I was gonna make a video about a uh, manga that need to be printed, but it's getting printed next year. Yes! Um, so Nina the Starry Bride is like a fantasy romance. There is a like love triangle or a love V or whatever it is, um, but like there's two male love interests. Um, but it's really well done. Like I feel like there are so many surprises in it. Uh, the characters are really good. Currently, I am still Team Azure, which I feel like a lot of people will disagree with me but um, I'm not totally sold on set yet. I don't know, I don't know. Argue with me in the comments, I don't know. Um, but yeah, Nina the Starry Bride, so good. I think I've read six and a half volumes. Again, stopped in the middle, I don't know why. It's so good. Um, I'm so excited that this is getting printed. Also, literally, you know a manga has like good character design and stuff when uh, the second I open it, I'm like, I need to cosplay that. So maybe next year there will be a Nina cosplay from me. Um, so of course Nina the Starry Bride is going to Seven Seas at Anime Expo. Then we have lo My Love Mix-Up. So I originally wasn't gonna read My Love Mix-Up. I know it's super popular, but then I watched the live action drama for it, uh, which stars Michi from Naniwa Dansi and Megiro Ren from Snowman, who are two Johnny's idols. Um, and so I watch a lot of Johnny's related dramas, um, but the drama was so cute. Like, I finished it like immediately. It was so, so good. Um, I watched it on Vicky, by the way. Um, it was so cute and I loved them. So I decided to buy the manga and so cute. Uh, I think I've read three volumes of it or something like that, um, but really, really cute. I really like My Love Mix Up. My Love Mix Up is gonna go in second male lead because it was super, super cute. Then um, we have another seinen manga. So this is Omaidens in Your Savage Season. This manga I read in one night. Like, it was so good. Um, so this is a seinen manga, which really doesn't mean a lot, um, but I feel like shoujo, if you really like shoujo, manga, this one will be really good. Um, it's got a really great cast of female characters. There is one kind of like student teacher type thing, but it's more of like the student is in love with the teacher and the teacher is like, absolutely not. Um, so there's a little bit of that in there, but it's really good. It has really frank discussions about like teenagers discovering their sexuality and stuff like that. Um, so, and like sexuality as in, um, one, for one, like what type of person that I like and like their relationship with like actual sex. Um, so really, really good. I highly recommend Oh Maiden's in Your Savage Season. Um, so this one is gonna go in second male lead. It's super fun. Then we have Our Fake Marriage, which is like a fake dating, but fake marriage type of thing. I'm gonna put this one if sh in, I'm really torn about this one because it feels kind of like if Shoujo Beat announcements were a manga, but I read like three volumes of this and didn't get like anything out of it. Like you get some semblance of like what the girl, like the relationship between the girl and the guy are because they used to know each other and then run into each other again. But like the girl is really stereotypical. She's like, oh, I'm so like plain and plain and boring and like, who could love me and then this super hot guy is in love with me what i'm so awkward i don't belong in his fancy lifestyle um and then so, so it has that kind of vibe to it um and then every time they're gonna like get somewhere they get interrupted so it's super frustrating so i think 
this one is gonna go into arguing about demographics. I'm, I'm sorry, if you like fake marriage and don't mind like super tropey things, then it might be good. But like, I don't really have any desire to read any more of our fake marriage. Um, if you think it's good, like convince me otherwise, but um, I think it's just like not really necessary. And then we have Paradise Kiss which I just finished all of it, read super quickly. I waited for like a year to read Paradise Kiss and uh, don't know why I waited lo so long. Also had never read the manga, seen the anime previously. I know, travesty, but uh, I used to read all Only Shonen when I was a child. Um, so Paradise Kiss was so, so good. I want to make a video about it, but I have to think about it for a really long time. Uh, there's so much in it. I loved all of the fashion. Um, I can see how I have friends who are like super into alt fashion who are really inspired by it and I can see why it would do that. It made me want to like jump back into like alt fashion and stuff like that. Um, so Paradise Kiss is so good. So of course it belongs into Seven Seas at Anime Expo. And then we have... Then we have Queen's Quality, which like you all know where I stand on Queen's Quality. Queen's Quality continues to get better and better with every volume and every new chapter. Like it is such a good manga. I really wanted to reread it earlier and I might reread it like um, in 2023 because I love it so much. I need to make a video about it or something. I don't know. But it has like one of the healthiest relationships in shoujo manga. Like Fumi and Kyutaro are so perfect. It gets really, really dark. It starts off like quite innocent. And then as it progresses, it gets really, really dark. Like I just got, okay. So I, um, attempt to read new chapters in Betsukami and, um, this is the January issue. And I don't know what chapter this is. Oh, so chapter 84, super dark, super gory. Like it just gets better and better and better. Oh, Queen's quality is Amazing. Um, it needs like a really good anime by a really good series. We're not having Requiem of the Rose King, tr Queen, King treatment to Queen's quality. It needs justice it deserves. Also, there was a free photo in Betsukami. It's so cute. <sighs> so cute. I love it. Um, but of course, uh, Queen's quality goes into Seven Seas at Anime Expo. There should be an extra category. I'm just putting it first. These are in no order, but it's going first because it is the best. Um, it's my favorite manga. <laughs> I feel like there should be another tier that's like just queen's quality um, above everything else. Actually, you know, let, let's do that. All right, so queen's quality gets its own thing because it is the best. All right, so next up we have Requiem of the Rose King. Um, I feel like I hyped up a lot of people for the anime for this and then I uh, was clowned on by the anime studios, so RIP. Um, but the manga, if you've only seen the Requiem of the Rose King anime, do not judge the manga by the anime because the manga is so fucking good. Oh! has me screaming all of the time. There's some weird stuff in it, but it's really good. Um, from people who, I don't know any of the historical context for like these characters or anything, cause it's based off of like historical stuff and Shakespeare stuff. So I don't know any of that background stuff, but I do know some people who do know that and they say it's really good. So there's that. Um, so if you like Shakespeare and if you like British history, like War of the Roses, type of stuff. Um, this manga is for you. It is so dark. It is so twisted. The politics, so good. Um, it's like, it's like, um, the good parts of Game of Thrones, um, in a shoujo manga. Um, and it's amazing. But Requiem of the Rose King is so good. So it goes into Seven Seas at Anime Expo. My goal is to catch up with Requiem of the Rose King. Um, then we have Rose and Blood. Um, which was really shitty. Like, I'm sorry. I think on a podcast I had for a little bit, um, I said it was good and I would read more, but upon further re reflection, um, I do not want to read any more of this manga. There's nothing to this manga. It's like a vampire thing. It feels like an Otome game. And I think the mangaka or the artist did stuff for Otome games. Um, but this artist, yes, because it's only one person. This artist like needs a writer because this is like not good. Um, so I don't want to read any more of Rose and Blood, like ever. The art is super pretty. Like I would get an art book for the, by this uh, artist, but the story is like not there. Uh, so we're gonna put this in our arguing about demographics. It's not good. Um, and then we have Sailor Moon. I finished the Sailor Moon manga like way in the beginning of the year, and Sailor Moon is perfect and amazing and beautiful and. I had only seen the the anime adaptations of the end of 
the series, so the manga is different than the anime. And Sailor Moon Crystal hadn't caught up, isn't like hasn't finished yet. Um, so I'd never seen this version of the ending of it, uh, which is incredible. I feel like the last arc of it, like the Galaxia arc, I guess, the Sailor Stars arc, doesn't really feel like the rest of the manga. Um, there's some sort of like weird disconnect and I feel like all of the characters don't feel like themselves in it. Um, that's probably my only criticism of the Sailor Moon manga, but otherwise it is perfect and amazing and beautiful and Sailor Moon could uh, put Goku on his ass. Uh, so Sailor Moon is gonna go into Seven Seas at Anime Expo because it is a classic and amazing and beautiful and perfect. Uh, then we have Saint Seiya, Saint Tia show. So this is a spinoff of Saint Seiya, which is like a famous shonen thing anime manga. Um, it's kind of about like Zodiac warriors and stuff like that. And the Saint Seiya focuses on a group of male warriors. And Saint Tia show is a group of female warriors that, uh, that run along, like the storyline of Saint Tia show runs along the Saint Seiya storyline, but I don't think you need to know anything about Saint Seiya to read Saint Tia show. I don't know anything about Saint Seiya. I like read on Wikipedia quickly and sometimes I look up characters but that show up but um I feel like it stands on its own pretty well and they give you kind of like some context to what is happening so I think it's really good it has kind of Sailor Moon vibes but not really um I feel like if you want something in the realm of like celestial type female warriors then Saint Tia show would be really good um I felt I felt like I had a good time with it. I want to collect more of it. It's just really long. Um, so it's going to go into a second male lead because I had a really fun time with it. And then we have Sakura Hime, which is an Arina Tanemura manga, which is really, really good. I read this, started reading this a few weeks ago, actually, maybe a month ago. I don't know. Time means nothing to me anymore. So I haven't finished the third volume yet. I'm like in the middle of it and I really like it. Um, I like it better than her other series that I have read. Um, but Sakura Hime, super fun, kind of like an enemies to lovers, star-crossed lovers type of thing. Really good, like badass girl who fights demons um, and is like super nice, love it. Also want to cosplay her. No one is gonna know who I am, but I still wanna do it because her outfit is really cute. Um, so it's kind of like, it's got kind of magical girl vibes to it. Um, so if you want like a magical girl type of thing, but set in like a historical Japan setting, I feel like Sakura Hime would be good. Um, it's also like pretty dark. So, and I think it gets darker as it goes on. So I'm excited for that. So Sakura Hime is gonna go into second male lead because I'm really, really enjoying it. I have all of the volumes for it, except for volume four. So I can't, literally cannot, read any more of this manga until I get that. Um, then we have Seho Boys High School, which I read three volumes of. And despite it being a series about like horny teenage boys, I found it to be really fun and enjoyable. I want to read more of it. Um, I'm really excited to read more of it. It has like, like it is mostly like uh, boys in an all boys school in dormitories uh, shenanigans, like boys being boys. They talk a lot about wanting to get girlfriends and to have sex and, you know, kind of like teenage boy type of things. Um, but there's also like this undercurrent of like, kind of like the main character is overcoming a huge loss. And it's kind of got this little bit of a storyline there of how he is going to get through that. So. That is really interesting. I wanna see more of it. There's a little bit of a, like a student teacher relationship in there, which is not great, but it seems to keep on happening. Um, so I'm gonna put Seho Boys High School in second male lead because I really enjoyed it and I wanna read more of it. And then we have Snow White with red hair, which of course, like it is a staple on my channel, it's a staple in my collection. I pre-order it every single time it comes out. It is so, so, good. Recently I've been a little angry with Mitsuhide because of events and things that he has done but it's fine I love him anyway but you know we all love Shiryuki so she goes up into Seven Seas at Anime Expo because 
It's the best. It's so much fun. It's so wholesome. It's amazing. Uh, then we have Skip and Loafer, which I have read two volumes of. It's a seinen high school slice of like romance. Really cute. I had a good time with it. I'm not really like jumping to get the next volume, but still really fun. I think there's an anime coming out for it soon. Um, but yeah, um, this was really good. So I'm going to put it into second male lead. And then we have Something's Wrong With Us, which is a Jose, I think, um, like romance and there's like revenge and betrayal and murder and stuff like that. And it's really good. Um, there's a little bit of sexy times, but not too graphic. Um, so it's really good. I'm really behind on it, but um, I really like Something's Wrong With Us and I want to read more of it. So Something's Wrong With Us is going into second male lead. All right, then we have Starcrossed, which is a four volume body switching idol manga. So I said before, I really like stuff about like idols and idol culture and being an idol fan and being able to switch bodies with your favorite idol. Like dream come true, really. Um, I would not do as good of a job as Azusa did in like being her favorite idol because I don't have uh, dances memorized and I don't have like acting scenes memorized or like drama scenes memorized. Um, so she did a much better job than I would, but I envy her. She has a great life. Um, so I'm going to put Starcross in second male lead. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I think some other people don't, I, I don't know how other people feel on it. I don't hear many people talk about it, but I really like it. It was enough where like I cosplayed from it at Otakon this year. So yeah. Then we have Sweat and Soap. I read three volumes of Sweat and Soap this year. I want to read the rest. It's really good. It's a little, you have to kind of get over like the weirdness of it, but it's really fun otherwise. Um, I'm excited to read more. I feel like this, is, this one is gonna go into second male lead until I can read more of it. I've only read three volumes, so I don't know. I think it's good, um, but we'll have to get more of it until um, it can go up to Seven Seas at Anime Expo level. Um, then we have The Dragon Knight's Beloved. I think that's what this one is called. So this is kind of like a, I don't know, it's a romance in a fantasy world. There are dragons. There's a dragon knight captain um, who turns into royalty and the girl that he likes comes with her. Um, it's pretty good. I got the second volume of it. I haven't read it yet, um, but it's kind of like middle of the road type of thing. Super cute if you want like a romance in a fantasy world with like dragons and stuff like that. Um, so this one's gonna go into Shoujo Beat announcements, if Shoujo Beat announcements were manga, because it's not, it's not the best, but like I still wanna read more of it. All right, then we have the other Arena Tanimura manga, and that is The Gentleman's Alliance Cross. So I read three volumes of this. this those are the only three volumes I have. Um, and I thought it was pretty good. It's really confusing though. Um, I'm not gonna put any spoilers, but there's one character that I am, or two characters that I am so confused on. I don't know who is who. It's, it's a whole thing. Um, it's also like very, very chaotic. And I know that's like kind of the style of, the manga from the time, like the storytelling style, but I just don't like it very much. Like that storytelling style, like the chaos of it. Um, but the manga is okay and I need to figure out what the rest of it is. Um, I don't like it more than Sakura Hime. So I'm gonna put it into uh, if Shoujo Bean announcements were a manga. It's okay, I wanna read more, but I'm not like jumping at it. Uh, then we have The King's Beast by Rei Toma. So The King's Beast is like revenge, fantasy, um, romance type of story and with like beast people but not like in a beast stars way. They still look like humans. They just have like tails and like ears. Uh, so not like full on furry yet. Um, but I really like The King's Beast. The art is gorgeous. I feel like that's the main draw for me is the art and how beautiful every single page is. Uh, like I want to weep because some of these images are so like good looking. I'm also interested in the revenge plot to see kind of like where that is going. Um, so I'm going to put this one in second male lead. I feel like story wise, if it was just with the story, it would go into if Shoujo Bean announcements were a manga, but the art brings it up to that other level. Um, then we have the story of our unlikely love, which is a two volume digital manga, really, really cute slice of life 
manga about two high schoolers who have like conflicting personalities. One girl is kind of like somebody who will always say yes to helping people out and doing stuff for people. She kind of gets taken advantage of a little bit. And then there's a guy um, who is a slacker and um, stuff like that. Uh, kind of a bad boy type of thing. And the two of them kind of get together or meet and he helps like bring her out of being like abused by her classmates and stuff like that um abused as in like not physically abused but you know like taking being taken advantage of so i thought it was really cute i really really enjoyed it so i'm gonna put this one into second male lead because it was really fun i definitely recommend that one then we have those not so sweet boys by love i really like yoko no giri's manga i feel like she doesn't get enough credit um i feel like she is not given series like enough time for the stories that she wants to tell because those not so sweet boys is seven volumes um in like complete and the last volume feels like a little bit rushed and it needed more time which is sad like i feel like she could write a really good longer series like a good 13 volume series i feel like those not so sweet boys could have been maybe at least another volume longer um but it was really cute i really liked all the characters the romance in it um was really good. So I'm going to put those not so sweet boys in second male lead. Then I read Wild Ones. I read the whole series of Wild Ones. This is an older like Yakuza romance. It feels all, it's got kind of like the same uh, beginning vibes of like Fruits Basket. Like, you know, there's a nice girl whose mom dies and then she's taken in by another family. This family is her relatives. Um, but still same kind of vibe. Family, family is kind of weird. It's a Yakuza family. Um, so I wasn't sure how I was feeling about it as I was reading it, but once I got to the last volume, I was really sad to see all those characters go. So it really kind of grows on you. It was really fun to read. Um, some of it was a little bit tedious, but I think overall um, it gave me like an emotional reaction. So it's gonna go into second male lead. Then we have Wish, which is a clamp manga. I've been meaning to read Wish for like literally years. I've had this omnibus for so long, um, but it is really good. Um, it's a little bit weird. <laughs> Um, but still really good. Um, it does have a lot to talk about kind of like gender. There's a lot of like non-binary characters in, in it. Um, so that is interesting, um, but also something that like Clamp does, I think really well. I mean, I'm not non-binary, so I can't really speak on that, but I feel like Clamp generally does a pretty good job with like, um, gender or like being like having kind of like diverse casts and stuff like that. Um, and talking about like how love is, like transcends like pretty much everything. And from this love transcends, transcends gender, it transcends time, it transcends um, celestial bodies. <laughs> um, so Wish is really good, um, super interesting read. So I think Wish is gonna go into second male lead. And then we have Yakuza Lover, which, not a lot of people like. I kind of like Yakuza Lover. Like, I know it's trash, but like sometimes you just gotta read trash. Um, so I'm gonna put sh it, Yakuza Lover in If Shoujo Beat Announcements were a manga because it is like not super great, but I also, I also enjoy reading it. Like, it's fun and stupid and sometimes you just wanna like have brain empty sexy time manga and that's what Yakuza Lover is good for. Uh, and then we have Yona of the Dawn, which beautiful, perfect, amazing, wonderful. We love Yona of the Dawn. Um, so Yona of the Dawn has been be really good lately. Like, I mean, it's normally really good, but lately it has been excellent. Like the politics have been so good. Like kind of finding out background information about different characters has been super interesting. I have been invested. Um, so you'll know if the Dawn is going to go up to Seven Seas at Anime Expo because where else would it go? And then finally we have You Got Me Senpai, um, which is a slice of like romance high school manga and it's so cute. I've read three volumes of this and it is just such a cute manga. Like it's really about the character's relationship and not like how they get together. Like that's not really important. It's about like their relationship um and it feels like a really fun like high school romance 
Um, so I definitely want to read more, and so I need to. I feel like, is this one getting a print release? I don't know. Um, anyway, You Got Me Senpai is gonna go up into second male lead um, because I really enjoyed it and I wanna read more of it, but I haven't read enough for it to be up into seven seas at Anime Expo. So this is my ranking of manga. Uh, so I mostly read manga that I know I'm going to enjoy. So that's why there is mostly manga in Seven Seas at Anime Expo and Second Male Lean. Um, so manga that were like god tier to me or like really good manga. Not a lot of stuff that I DNF'd, only DNF'd two and only two manga that I just really didn't like at all. I mean, technically, um, our fake marriage and Rose and Blood could probably go into DNF, um, but you need something in the, I just, this was kind of trashy. I don't know, I feel like everything was pretty positive this year with my manga reading. Um, I read a lot of really great stuff this year. Uh, it was a really fun manga reading year. I feel like I read a lot. Um, this last few months, um, haven't read a lot of manga. I think I burnt myself out with watching a lot or re reading a lot of Fushigi Yugi. I read a lot of really dense manga in a short amount of time. Um, but this is pretty much um, where my manga is going to be for the rest of the year. Um, I might read one or two volumes more, but I'll let you know about that on Twitter if it's still alive. Thank you so much for this year on YouTube and for reading manga with me. Really um, fun to kind of like delve more into reading shoujo and jose manga and tell it, telling you all about it. It's been really, really great. Let me know in the comments what your favorite manga this year was um, or what your least favorite manga was uh, so I know what to stay away from. <laughs> Thank you again for everything this year. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, hit that notification bell to be notified when I make new videos. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more manga goodness from me. That's all I've got for you guys today. I'm Chrissy Lou. Till next time, matane!